Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Sports Grid Fantasy Football Podcast Legendary Upside uh, Combinatorial, very appropriately, Combinatorial <laughs> Fantasy Football Podcast. Um, basically, for the next hour, you're going to get an hour of ADP chasing um, without Sam Sherman. Sam Sherman is in Kenya right now. Not a bit, not a joke. Um, I think he's he's teaching them how to use Bitcoin. That's what that's that's my head canon. It's not actually what he's doing, but that's that's what I that's what I am telling myself. I think he's doing he's some doing, kind of startup Amazon related thing. Okay, he, he is. So he is doing that, but it's a lot cooler. It's a lot cooler to say <laughs> that he's um you know he's just giving them all ledgers and and uh you know teaching them how to use the blockchain. So uh, how many drafts have you done since? Monday. So since we started to get these these player movements, probably ten, something like that. Yeah, I, I think I I've probably done five. But I'm right now. What I'm doing is I'm entering in one slow draft every day and one fast draft every day. That gets me kind of roughly on pace to maxing the big board, which I've never done. I I think me I did neither. like ten big boards last year. I you guess did like seventy five, something like that. It's just where we are. It's just where we are as a society. You know, like this is like that, that, that it's there. We're already talking about it. Pete released a strategy video on Thursday, March 14th. So that, I guess, I guess that's yeah. where we are. No, I mean, I've had big board rankings up for months now. <laughs> I've been working on them every day. They got yeah, us, man. I, I mean, they got us. You know, and and I guess that is what it is, which is that they they understand that we just really like to draft, and it's not as if there's not other things to do. If you are a draft person, you could be drafting hockey and basketball. I mean, actually, right now you could be drafting for a season that's much closer to starting. You could be drafting Major League Baseball best ball contests, but that's not what we're doing, Pat. I do prefer this. Um, actually, I was writing an article, and it was similar to a podcast that I did with, with Mike Leone, like a few years ago. Um, and I went back and, and was listening to it. And it's funny to like, I was basically like, yeah, I think I'm going to try getting a little more into NBA. It's like, yeah, right, dude. <laughs> you just want to draft football teams. So I, at least feels, at least I don't have to pretend that I'm going to like draft baseball, best ball teams. Like, nope, I'm just going to draft football as soon as the season ends until it starts again. You know, the, the thing is, to be for draft based games, not for DFS based games, but for draft based games, you do actually have to be following the sport. I guess maybe Major League Baseball, you could probably just draft off rankings. For NBA, you would be you would be dead. You you have to like really have opinions on the teams and the players and everything. And and actually the kind of the thing I'm thinking is I'm wondering if, if drafting this whole time will make me better that first month when BBM opens where it's like, I've already had all these takes. I've already workshopped all these takes about what all these teams are going to be like, what all these rookies are going to do. I've been I've been thinking about what the fantasy range of outcomes for the Caleb Williams Bears are going to be for three months already. So maybe I will be more ready to go. Yeah, it's low stakes reps is kind of how I think about it. You know, it's, it's, it's $10 instead of 25 Most people aren't going to, they give you max best ball mania you're not like if you're going to max one it's best ball mania not the big board um and so i think it gives you if you're kind of like peppering in some some teams here and there it gives you drafting reps but it also gives you market based reps where you're like market reps yeah you're like making predictions about where the market's going to head and i've already screwed some of that up i'm like some of it you know it's chaotic some of it i'm like i should have i should have done a better job there but I also am like, good, like good that I'm learning and feeling like, you know, I have lessons I want to apply and make sure in the summer that I'm like dialed in on this type of stuff. If I see similar things. So I just, you know, it's, it's a way of staying sharp with like not making blunders with, you know, kind of predicting where the market's going to go. For sure. All right. So since the last time that we've done any version of ADP chasing, where I basically turned you and Sam on to the fact that Justin Fields is not going to be a starting quarterback in the NFL. In I, I, I feel the need to defend Sam here. Sam has been saying that nonstop for I don't know since I started talking to him after the season. I I feel <laughs> like I feel like he still maybe maybe it was. I think he 
thought he was going to the Raiders, though. Well, I don't know. He was he's the most he's been the most bearish on fields in our chat, I would say. Yes. Um, yeah. And I was like probably the most bullish, although my thing was more. Yeah, he's over drafted. Um, and at one point we had him, I think, in line or maybe even slightly ahead of ADP, but quickly put him back. He's been for weeks now behind ADP, well behind um, in the leg up rankings. But my thing was like more he could get benched. I didn't I really didn't think there was much chance at all that he just like wouldn't start week one. I even have a bet, a side bet with. Uh, well, maybe he, maybe Sam, he will be starting he week he one now for the Chicago Bears. <laughs> if right? I get there on our bet, we don't you, they keep him and they start him for Williams. Don't you that like not so that good. that won't be their that I don't think that will be their plan for the entirety of the season. Like I don't no, think it'll won't. be like a a quarterback competition that Justin Fields wins, but like they take Caleb Williams, they're like. What is a what is a conditional fifth round pick for Caleb Williams really do for this franchise or for Justin Perfect Fields? Yeah, really do for us. You know? I, you know what it honestly does? It avoids that scenario. Fields is like very well liked in the locker room, and sure, you just don't want to deal with that. I think I would I would rather have the fifth. Like I just don't want the headache. Like I I'm trying to get this guy yeah. feeling comfortable. Like why would I mess with that at all? You you got a franchise quarterback coming in. You spent the number one pick on him. And it's like. I ah, really should get a fourth here. So we're just going to like create a controversy around who's our starting quarterback is. Well, well it, it feels phone. like what happened is, is it's the Trey Lance thing where it's actually such an embarrassing situation for everyone all around. Like it's embarrassing for Justin Fields to be traded for a fourth round pick. It's embarrassing for the front office that traded the extra first round pick to get him to have to uh, give it up. You know, like it's, it's, Everyone involved in this is embarrassed. Fields is embarrassed. Well, Fields someone is embarrassed. Someone's being stupid right now, and I don't know who, right? Because the Bears are maybe still saying we want, you know, like a third conditional third that could be a second or something, right? Which isn't going to happen. Or maybe um, they're saying we want to keep Justin because we still think we might get a mega offer for the first. Well, pick okay, that we'll take, and that's fine. And then in that case, maybe maybe that's not fair, like to say it someone's doing something stupid because maybe they're just like shit happens let's see and maybe maybe something breaks our way that's okay but i guess yeah. if the on the compensation likely someone is just completely you know it, just out of their minds on this because like if you're if you're the raiders if you're the broncos and i know that like sean payton doesn't really want to tie himself to justin fields for even probably one year but even you know two years like he just he just freed himself of Russell Wilson, I don't think that's his plan, but like, or the Vikings, like if you have to trade, if it's really a fifth, like you should send the fifth. Like that's a no brainer. You're getting a, a, a year of, of the rookie contract and then a fifth year option. At this point, maybe you could get him to even like, maybe you don't pick up the fifth year option and get him to sign the Jordan Love thing. The like Jordan Love less. extension. You could, Sam was talking no, no, about that, no, which I felt like was a little much, him, but. If you're Fields, you need to be playing this like there's still a team that wants me. I'm still one of the 32 best quarterbacks in the NFL. Someone's going to get hurt. Someone, some quarterback is going to get hurt in the spring, in the summer, whatever. Like that, you, just well, that, well there was the there goes. was talk of like he could go to the Colts, maybe he goes to the Eagles and is the backup. Like that, I would be fighting that hard if I was Fields. I'm like, dude. I mean, the thing that I think Fields should be open to at this point is like send me to minnesota send me to minnesota and, and i'll i'll sign a really cheap i don't pick up my fifth year and i'm down to sign a very cheap deal right now that locks me in for 2025 he, as well he because he's gonna beat out darnold so this is like well the the vikings the way i'm drafting right now bring it back to uh the big boards i'm drafting the vikings like jj mccarthy is the quarterback so I'm actually well, kind of scoop- yeah, that, I'm actually kind of scooping the dip on some of these guys. Like I've been, I, I think I've took Madison four times since Kirk Cousins announced that he was going to the Falcons. Like, but isn't wide- McCarthy still a major downgrade from Kirk? So f- funny you ask. I have not been able to make heads or tails of this McCarthy thing. Really, like he's just the reverse of the style of guy that I would gravitate towards in general. But I had Ted Nguyen from the Athletic on the podcast yesterday, who's like just like a pretty good ball knower, like a guy who's going to watch the film and explain it in a pretty straightforward way. And he made a comp that blew my mind. 
but it's like JJ McCarthy for some GM is like Trey Lance, where the not a ton of reps, not a ton of reps, right? I, I think he I think he threw seven hundred some passes total at Michigan. But whatever you want those reps to be, they're there, right? He did everything you could have asked of him, won all these games, ran a little bit, weighed what you want him to weigh at the combine. Actually, had one of the what was it the sh- one of the best really good sh- uh, short shuttle uh, three short cone. shuttle yeah for for yeah. a quarterback and I mean three cone I think his three cone was awesome too so which like that totally unlocked the whole thing for me where it's like if that's what a GM is putting on him I get that I get that much more than the idea of oh he's gonna come in and be Brock Purdy right which is kind of what it seemed like to me is that that's what GMs were were hoping for. I guess, but I mean that's bad. <laughs> Trey Lance was bad. <laughs> like, well, it, but it's not. It's not bad if JJ McCarthy is good. It's a disaster. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, but but diff, diff, obviously different play style than Trey Lance. No, sure. No, but but I guess what I would say there is that if you're, that is an interesting comp. But I think partly because the volume is a concern with. JJ McCarthy in college, but I think it's also a concern uh in the pros. I the Vikings are pretty committed to passing the ball, so I doubt they go like I, ultra that's conservative. What, I'm not worried about KOC bringing in some quarterback and running like the Packers offense, where it's like you know bringing the play clock down the one and hand. I I'm not, and I don't think any of their personnel moves would indicate that either. Like it's not like like Aaron Jones. The running back they brought yeah, in. Yeah, that's not their style. Is like a pace in space. They they didn't bring in um, Zach Moss, right? That that maybe would have been an indication of what they wanted to do, and they didn't do that. Or Derrick Henry would have been the real. Or, yeah. or Derrick Henry, sure. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree, and I think that's probably the best case and the best case landing spot for McCarthy. Um, but I still, I mean, compared to Kirk, who you can put volume on, you know, he'll. He'll be like he can support both efficiency in the passing game and volume. And I think we're just we're gonna see less volume with McCarthy as a rookie quarterback. The efficiency is a question mark. I think we'll probably get plenty of Darnold uh this year if they do bring in McCarthy. Like I oh, I doubt I doubt he's the week one starter. No, he, he won't be the week one starter, but it'll probably be like the week that well, the thing about that is is the NFC is so weak. You might not want to dick around. You might not want to dick around with Sam Darnold because nine wins might do it. Nine, nine, actually, nine wins does do it. Nine wins gets you a playoff spot in the NFC. But I think O'Connell might be able to get nine wins with Darnold. Like it's a pretty well designed offense. They're they're actually it's Mina possible. Kimes, Mina Kimes, like literally just as you and I went on air, was tweeting out this story about how Kevin O'Connell said he's known Sam Darnold since he was in high school, and is like a big fan. Darnold has some tools like I mean I don't think Darnold's good at all no. but it's like and JJ McCarthy like will be better than him most likely yeah I mean I hope so I'd, I'd hope so yeah yeah let's hope but this year you know I'm not sure anyway I think I'm not feeling that great about the Vikings is really what it comes down to I think we're getting some Darnold we're getting some McCarthy we're not going to get as much volume as Kirk we're going to get less efficiency so I'm not as into the Addison thing. I mean, I don't think we should be like nuking him, but we're slightly, Why, we're slightly okay. behind in ADP. But if I told you that, like, you end up we're fairly getting, substantially behind. Well, you just end up getting with like wide receiver forty, Jordan Addison, and quarterback thirty one, JJ McCarthy. Like, what do you think those ADPs are going to be in August? I guess it doesn't matter as much for the time capsule contest. Yeah, and I don't know that they're going to be that different. Like JJ McCarthy. Oh, Sam McCarthy's Darnold... going to go up a lot when he gets drafted at six. Okay, you're probably right about that. Yeah. McCarthy, though, we're 16 picks ahead of ADP now on him. So, sure. you know, and okay. you pick 195. So I'm fine with drafting JJ McCarthy. I generally am not because I like to get quarterback taken care of and be done. I It's, it's just a lot of like, how many starts See, am I, I getting? I, I, I really can't help myself. I, I've had multiple teams where it's Caleb Williams, Drake May, JJ McCarthy is my quarterback room. I'm I'm really having a hard time helping myself with the rookies. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, 
the 2021 <laughs> class, right? That I mean, we, it should be a real lesson. It should be a real lesson, but it does not appear to be. <laughs> it does not appear that I learned anything from all of those Trey Lance, Justin Fields teams that I drafted in best. Even Lawrence field. was a disaster. There's no good answers there. <laughs> Mac Jones was probably the best. Mac Jones was the win. <laughs> So I, I probably need to stop doing that. I probably need to I probably need to log out of doing um that. I in do your defense, one... I've done I mean I've I do like like Tua Daniels May or you know, like I, I, I usually I'll add one veteran, you know, or I'll do like Caleb May Rogers or something, you know. I, I think I take one of the rookie quarterbacks. I, I if I had to guess right now. 90 percent of the time maybe 100 percent. i take time. a lot of the rookie quarterback well i drafted I think a lot they're, of May, i think they're so mispriced but... quarterback 21 for drake may with the commanders that's i nuts. mean yeah well i guess the fact that he might be a patriot uh then i'm moving drake may to like quarterback 28 but um <laughs> <laughs> but, but if he's if he's a commander i mean I, quarterback i might take him ahead of purdy honestly if he's a commander wow um, I, I'm a, I love to hear that because I have a ton of Drake May. He goes so late. He has an ADP of 148. That's yeah, not nuts. when you're in a draft with me, buddy. No, yeah, me neither. Yeah, but I mean, I like Caleb Williams. I uh, and I like and I like Jaden Daniels. Like, I, I have a lot of worries about like what Jaden Daniels is long term, but um, he's gonna run a lot year one, so I'm I'm into that. Uh, yeah. And then obviously, I don't want to be out on Caleb. And I actually, I was just like one of the things that I, I really feel strongly after watching how this this played out, um, particularly the Kirk Cousins signing and, and the way the Falcons ADPs reacted. I was like, I think all these bears move up once Caleb is drafted number one. <laughs> and including oh, yeah. Caleb. Oh, well, because the market is pricing in roughly about the same percentage chance that the bears fuck up this pick that kind of like the betting markets are, you know, like Caleb I think Williams. More, I think they're pricing in more. So like Caleb Williams to the Bears exactly on DraftKings is I think minus eight hundred. So that's saying there's like a nine what like a ninety percent probability. I don't don't I guess do not ask me to do the math on this podcast. Eight to Dude. one. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. So that that price is in some chance that it's another team um that trades up for him or whatever. But yes, and and I I mean I think the Bears also pick at nine as well leaving them well in the territory of Adunze, Thomas, Worthy, Worthy at nine. Probably not Worthy. Probably A.D. Mitchell is going to be the I don't think Worthy's going drafted. nine. Wouldn't Thomas go there? Oh, yes, Thomas, sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my, my insanest hot take, which I'll only bury in a podcast and won't have this on Twitter to be old takes exposed, is that I would take <laughs> I would take A.D. Mitchell. I would take A.D. Mitchell over Thomas. Wow. You should I just keep believe. That on Twitter. I just believe. What is the? I mean, it's like one athletic guy who has a slightly better profile than another athletic guy. What? And Thomas being that better profile. You're like it's like I I hate to do these no database takes, but Mitchell. <laughs> but here we go. Well, I don't I don't hate it actually. I love it, but it's the type of thing <laughs> I like to. It's the thing I. It's, most of the stuff I like to keep internal because it sounds so <laughs> dumb when you say it. So there's a couple things. The first being that A.D. Mitchell played in five college football playoff games and scored five touchdowns. Okay. That I think that to me is just like <laughs> this guy cool. gets he just gets into. I mean, that is situations. the thing. Everyone's like, dude, when this guy turns it on, he's awesome. He's awesome. Right. And then the other thing is the 11 touchdowns for that Texas team last year that had like a bajillion NFL players on it also is kind of like that is that also is is pretty impressive to me because because if you look at the dominator rating stuff him and worthy are pretty even but worthy scored five times you know and mm -hmm. as uh as I, every time i draft a team with rich rebar i i am always reminded of this which is that the best thing for your fantasy team is just getting a lot of fucking touchdowns and ad mitchell is going to score if ad mitchell is good if his game translates from college to the nfl i mean he might score nine touchdowns as a rookie like immediately right away yeah, I could see that for sure. I mean, he's going to have like a red zone package at the very least. Um, and he's good. He's good down the field, too. I, I guess you know, teams are doing that stuff less in the NFL now. And none of this is to detract from Brian Thomas Jr. I just uh, do. You, do you have this thing when evaluating 
um, LSU wide receivers who are like, I swear to God, if this guy's fucking Terrace Marshall, I'm going to lose my mind. <laughs> Not really. Not really. I mean, I don't think. I mean, I guess the red flag for both of them is related. Well, one of the red flags is related to yards per route run. Um, Brian Thomas only had 1.95 career yards per route run, which is not great. Um, it's, it's kind of borderline bad. But A.D. Mitchell was at 1.68, which is where I'd start to get worried for a tight end. Yeah, like, it's not this, good. Dude, yeah, the efficiency is like really concerning, like really concerning. So and then like you have, you know, all sorts of issues with both guys. Actually, they had a ton of contested targets. Um, there's, you know, it's potential separation issues. Uh, the, the contested target stuff is like I I'm so triggered by that stuff from um our Sega White side. It's like it makes me never want to go back to it again. It's bad, man. Some of the I mean, it doesn't have to be bad, you know. And I think I feel a little bit better about Brian Thomas's kind of like the the explanations that I hear for it. It's about other people. It's like oh, you know, he like you could go watch like he was seriously underthrown on on a Brian deep ball. Brian Thomas um had a faster. Uh, like, so, you know, they have the 10 yard split in the 40 yard dash. And then they also have the fly split, which is the last half of it. Mm. He was faster than Xavier worthy in the, wow. the 20 yard split in the back half. Yeah. So he's, I mean, I just, I don't know. I feel better about like his ability translating partly. Cause I don't have to like worry if like, he's gonna like do it. Right. Like, like you're telling me like, listen, if AD Mitchell just like decides to be good, he, he'll be awesome. It's like, well, I don't know. <laughs> what he's going to decide to do though, man. So I don't know. I, I would take Thomas over AD Mitchell. I mean, Mitchell's a tough eval for me and I, I definitely want to have some, I'm trying to take him some in best ball, but I mean, if you think AD Mitchell's ahead of Thomas, like Thomas is going, what, like rounds and rounds ahead of. Yeah. I take, I take Mitchell. Mitchell and worthy are both kind of in that like wide receiver 48 to 55 range. I don't have the ADPs pulled up right now, yeah, but yeah, I take Thomas I take is at those ADP 66. And Mitchell, and I don't take him a ton, which maybe is a leak because I don't I dislike I take him, him or anything. Around. Yeah, Mitchell's at one hundred and six. So I wonder yeah. if Thomas is um, kind of just getting pulled. Like, I wonder if you feel this way that even even neighbors and Adunze and Thomas are all kind of getting pulled up by how high Marvin Harrison Jr. is going. Like, there's there now that the ceiling for how high a rookie wide receiver can be drafted is gone that it's just kind of pull and and you know it's only sweaty virgin nerds who are drafting right now which means well, wide receivers part. yeah wide receivers are just they're just off the board you know you're you're looking at the wide receiver 45 by like the seventh round now yeah i mean marvin harrison will not go at pick 18 in august you know he's at 18.7 adp that's not going to be where he goes in august but like so what because do you want him or not? And this is where he's going to go. It's not like a bunch of like random, like, you know, and you're not, you're, bros you're not are going to start drafting in like April on April 12th. <laughs> like they're you're not, not competing they're not against there. those teams in, no. in this contest. Yeah. That's a good yeah. point. So it's more about is Marvin Harrison a fade on May 12th? Probably. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, because his ADP will fall. But that's well, especially something. Especially now that mind. Greg Dorch is going to be a starter, so he's going to have to try and get targets away from Dorch. And that's just, <laughs> I mean, a lot of lot better players than Marvin Harrison Jr. have tried and failed. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, I, I mean, very unironically, I think Rondell Moore going to the Falcons uh, to play the 2 2 role in the um, Zach Robinson offense, and then Dorch getting freed is like actually good for both of them. Yeah, although I would with kind of fringier players. I mean, this is a deep wide receiver class, so I just be careful. Don't. It's don't, only don't well. It's only it's only them. deep. It's only deep if the. I mean, I already have a huge Rondale bag. He's like wide receiver one fourteen. I, I take him in the. Yeah, no, I, t- I take time. some Rondale. Yeah. Um, it's only deep if NFL teams decide it is though. Like if if Ricky Pearsall. That's true. That's if true. Ricky Pearsall falls to the fourth round, it's not like any of us are going to be able to be like, this is an injustice. You know what I'm saying? I agree. Yeah. No, if Ricky Pearsall was in the fifth round, like I, if he would have been projected to go to the fifth round the whole time, like I wouldn't I, I have drafted it. him once. Yeah. 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 But he's so, not. <laughs> he's projected to right. go in the second or third. And and you know what? The I, I, I actually, I had this, like I was thinking about fantasy football before bed last night, as I'm wont to do <laughs> in March. 
And I, I was Congrats realizing the sex. that. Yeah, totally. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Puka Nakua really his the 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 total unpredictability of his season is is just gonna fuck up how people draft this year so bad. You know, people are gonna get bags packed of these sixth round rookies who are like projected to make these rosters, you know, like and, and who and the, it, it'll be any statistical nugget, right? Tar, Puka's thing was yards per route run. He didn't play very much, but his yards per route run right. was Malik Washington's final season is going to be uh, sure. Taj, well, Taj well Washington, Taj, Taj Washington right. uh, for, for USC will, will be one. Um, you, just like whatever. And these guys are going to get drafted, not even high, you know, day three. How many day three wide receivers have you fallen in love with and never got to watch them play until they were a St. Louis battle hawk? Like a lot of them. But but people and in this contest, I think it's totally fine. This it's you're you're risking fifteen hundred dollars. So, you know, a lot of the guys you're gonna pick are gonna get hurt. Like there's just we're so far away from being able to forecast with any insane accuracy right now. But getting into like June, July, August, I don't know if you need to have forty seven percent of Jordan Winningham, you know, because he's gonna make the Texans roster. Yeah, well, and I think generally, like, this is the wrong class to take really confident stands on in terms of, like, you know, I'm going to draft a bunch of, like, I have a lot of Jermaine Burton. I really like Jermaine Burton, but it's mostly because almost all the other guys that I like are are up in, like, ADP 150 to 180, and he's at, like, 210. You so know I take every time when I when I'm just a little lost at the end. It's not a, it's not a, it's an, yeah, I bet you can guess it's not a wide receiver. I, I mean, I take this guy all the time. Deuce Vaughn. Dylan Lobb. Just I'm not, like, I'm surprised you're not known a Vaughn. I mean, oh, there's, they don't have any running backs. Oh, cause there. I take Dowdle. I take Dowdle too, yeah. He's, he's 215 pounds. Like it just, you know. No, but you, well, now you're a weight guy? What's going on? At running back, at running back, you have to be. At wide receiver, it doesn't matter. Like, the guy could basically be a sliver. He could be a two-dimensional line. I mean, imagine how easy it would be to split what the two-high safety. You? He used to be the ultimate big wide receiver. <laughs> and used to you love know, little running backs. <laughs> you know what? Justin Hunter should come back. It's okay to be skinny as a wide receiver now. It's okay Justin, now, Justin. Justin. It's safe. <laughs> <laughs> Justin Hunter should unretire and come back because it's all right to be skinny now. We're, we we saved his career. I don't know uh, if it's hard to be skinny. You also kind of want to be a little short. <laughs> and yes, you need the to be. The lankiness hasn't to, quite come through. The The platonic ideal of an NFL wide receiver now is 5'9", 5'10", 180 to 190 pounds. That That is like perfect NFL wide receiver size, which is so insane because 10 years ago, I'd be like, you literally cannot draft someone who's less than 200 pounds. Right, like, right. They're so useless. Yeah, congrats on drafting Stedman Bailey. <laughs> Stedman Bailey, there's a guy who should have, Who I mean, Stedman Bailey would be great right now. I you know, honestly I, think he'd be great right now, yeah. Unironically, uh, he and, uh, how am I forgetting his teammate's name? It, unbelievable, West Virginia. I mean, this guy was was, like he was before Kevin White. Kevin Kevin White was years later, right? I mean, this guy this guy was like a hero. Stedman Bailey, I got oh the word okay. (laughs) West Virginia. I'm gonna be so mad when I forget this. Tavon Austin. Austin. How did we forget Tavon Tavon Austin? Austin? Yeah, no, it came to me right as you saw it. Yeah, Tavon Austin. He went like what fourth or fifth overall? Eighth overall to the Rams. Okay, and they just never they were like well. Uh, unfortunately, we his, don't know what to do. His now. head coach was Jeff Fisher. He literally stood no chance. Like whatever chance he would have had in that era of the NFL, his head coach was Jeff Fisher, and Brian Schottenheimer was an off- <laughs> his offensive coordinator. There was no way that was ever working. I don't if know Tank what Dell, happened. If Tank Dell was drafted by that team, he would have been like the best punt return in the league. And that's that's all he would have done. <laughs> and that's all we would have ever seen from him. It would have been uh, he would have been running routes behind the guy who who kept getting. Um, micro fracture surgery on Ryan his knee. Quick. No, dude. Oh, wow. We're really playing. Remember this guy now? Um, no, he. This guy went to the University of Missouri. He literally. I think he had micro fracture surgery on his knee. Oh, three oh, times. oh, 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 oh. It started with a D. Uh, damn it. I know who you're not, talking. Not Kenny Britt, but not very Kenny, Kenny Britt. Not Brian Quick. No, he had one good season. He had one really good season. Maybe even half. D- Dontario. Yes. Alexander, 
Yes, Denario Alexander. Denario and Alexander. A, and then he was a, oh. and then he was a Charger too. Yeah, Denario Alexander. That was what the platonic ideal of an NFL wide receiver was yeah, a decade yeah, ago. Yeah. Was was uh, a guy who was six four two twenty. Sydney Rice. Yes. Don't stay healthy. Great uh, comparison. Be cool when you're out there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's get back to the football. <laughs> where, um, where were we? <laughs> so the the biggest riser, the biggest riser in the big board since this stuff started is Zach Moss. And I got to say, makes sense. I, I get it. Of course I get it. But I feel like people are a bit overreacting to a two year, $8 million contract mm-hmm, mm-hmm. on a team where we've already seen a guy in that mold be incredibly disappointing with like very little ceiling for fantasy. And also misremembering how you're talking about Mixon. Mixon has had a ceiling weirdly. It just never happens when we want it to. He has ceilings in a game. So he definitely has ceilings in a singular game. Cause he, and, and also his expected points always look insane because they give him like three tries in a row at the goal line. It is one of the funniest things about expected points that failing on a one yard carry you actually get, gives you, you get another, more. you get, you get another, um, yeah, I hate that also, part. Moss just like he was really good for that first stretch before Jonathan Taylor right. came back, and then he was pretty bad like the back half of the season. Like he is, he had multiple games under three yards per carry. He actually, funnily enough, ended up below his career average in success rate because of how effective wow. he was in the back half of the season. I'm not. None of this is to say that Zach Moss is not good. Crane is very familiar with Zach Moss's work for for a long time. Um, ship chasing fans. Um, but I, 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 and maybe I'm just being a slappy with Chase Brown, but I feel like Chase Brown is at the very least a real limiting factor to, to Moss's range yeah. of outcomes. Yeah, he definitely can be. I think there's scenarios where they just kind of cannibalize each other and it's a bummer. Um, but I think there's scenarios where, yeah, M- Moss finally, <laughs> finally pays off on my auto pick from, from years ago and is, uh, a really nice pick right before you know kind of like pick 95 i think is maybe where he settles he's still coming up further he's he's got a ways to go until he gets there but i think oh we got we got breaking news we got breaking news on the program okay if i told you that a team just traded for sam howell what do you think they traded to get him and what team do you think it is just guess right now what team do you think uh the seventh round pick and i don't know uh, who would trade from it? The, the Denver, the Seattle Seahawks. Oh God! The Seahawks give a third round pick and a fifth what? round pick. The Seahawks get their fourth round pick, so they only move about they move back about forty oh, spots. Oh, okay, okay. So the Seahawks move back about forty. They trade spots. down and they get a fit and they get a, that's still well, kind of a lot. And they also gave up a uh, six, so they're they're moving down twice. Oh, okay. All right. They're so moving down sixth. twice and they're getting Howell. I mean, I, I actually probably expect Howell to start week one for, for the Seahawks. I don't. Really? Yeah. I, I think I think if she that knows organiz- better than Howell. Oh, for sure. But if that organization wanted to run back the same thing, they wouldn't have f- fired Pete Carroll. I yeah, I guess, but I mean they did then just come in and talk about how they want to run the ball a bunch. Like that's I just think coaches, coaches don't say. you think coaches just say that though? Like honestly, at this point, wouldn't you be more surprised if a coach didn't say that? Probably smarter to say it, right? You're just like, like you know what I fucking love running the ball, running it's the ball, awesome. You just got to establish it. It's important. And like, then you just any, do whatever you want. Because does that's any just coach people not hear. say that? I, I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Does any coach be like, I don't like running the ball? So I actually, I could not remember. I still cannot remember who this is, but someone did say like, we're trying to score points. The point of our offense is to score oh, points. Mike, Mike McDaniel. Was it Mike McDaniel? Okay. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, that's what I would prefer. Like we like points and we want to score them. Also Chip Kelly. Also back in the day. But he loves to run the ball. He loves to run the ball. That's the thing people forget. Chip Kelly loves to run the ball. He does. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I don't know. Like, I don't think it makes Sam Howell that draftable it definitely makes gino less draftable and it in definitely makes now. gino less draftable we've been uh behind on gino uh although i guess so now we're now we're slightly ahead and i so think we'll bring that probably takes them out of the team that would trade up for mccarthy 
the Seahawks now, probably. I think they would be less into that now. Yeah, I mean, they were always, I think they, they've probably, what I think this says is they're not that into Penix or, or Knicks because sure. they've had to know, they've known for weeks that they weren't getting McCarthy. McCarthy's yeah. locked into the top 10. I mean, I didn't, now the I Falcons they become an entry Penix. point. Like, yeah. if you're the Raiders and you want McCarthy, you can go and, and they get, like, you can jump the, the Vikings. You know, the, the Falcons are actually, it's kind of crazy how, like, signing Cousins has made them, it's like, they're now in the driver's seat of the draft, potentially, where they can just be like, all right, who wants McCarthy? The the yeah. The Raiders, the Broncos, and the Vikings could all be looking to trade up for that pick. Uh, I, I actually, I actually like this. I, I actually like this move for the Seahawks. I mean, it's like a little bit rich, but like whatever. Well, they traded down. The they, they, it's important that they got the sixth and the fourth back because it's like they they just traded down twice. They just traded down about eighty cumulative spots. Yeah, and got Sam Howell, who's like sucks, but it's, it's, you know, you know who, you know who <laughs> it's like, sucks, kind, but... you know who it's kind of bullish for is Metcalf. I'm always in favor of more quarterback outs, you yeah. know, like if Gino's kind of cratering or, you know, you, you bring in how, how is a very flawed quarterback, but he is fun at times. He is fun. Although he stopped being fun when he, he, um he took the wrong lesson from his sack rate, which is instead of um just getting sacked less, he just became less fun overall. Right. Like, yeah. Right. Yeah. Which is, which is a bit of a bummer. Um, He's he's a little Trubisky esque. He really locks on to the first read, and there's no if, if that's not happening. Well, it's, you want to talk about you want to talk about a line Trubisky to Howell to hopefully not Drake May. Hopefully it's a lot different. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> so I I believe I read Howell and and May are super good friends. I think I may have even read that May was in Howell's wedding. I gotta I I I gotta fact check that. Now, this May this was helpful. And, what two years ago? This actually was some like legitimate alpha because it was Jarek McKinnon it was, was re sign with the yeah. Chiefs. Yeah. Now in this case, I don't see how this possibly helps us. Uh well, no, I mean it actually would do the reverse of helping us, but no. Uh, <laughs> um no, they are they are quote unquote her her the saber and commander's wire, they are best friends, but not okay. I don't I don't think either of them are married yet. So all right, well, you know, that's fine. I mean, like, you know, the younger the younger uh of this duo can can work out, right? Like it's not exactly the same, not brothers, but like you get Equinemius St. Brown, no good. I'm gonna run St. Brown. You know, he's learning. He's saying, Oh, that that worked. Okay, I'll do that. Slot routes, those are good. Outside routes, sure. maybe not. Maybe that's not what we do. And then all of a sudden you're Pro Bowl wide receiver. <laughs> that's that simple. I mean, I think I like certainly if the process is okay, we went from Trubisky to Howell to May, maybe it's like an upgraded version each time. Yeah, so far it's worked. Yeah. I just need so. a massive upgrade the third time. <laughs> much, much better, hopefully. I mean, Sam Howell with a six percent sack rate. Pretty good. And 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 like a creator outside of structure, which he really isn't. You know, he he's like a hang in there. And hit that throw, like I'm gonna take the hit and get that throw downfield kind of guy. He's not like he's not like a hero ball kind of guy. When he plays hero ball, he gets sacked. Right. So yeah. That's I mean, if that's yeah, I'll take that. All right. Back to Chase Brown. He is my most drafted player right now in the big board. I feel pretty neutral about Zach Moss. There there was no way that the Bengals went into the season with Chase Brown, Travion Williams, and Chris Evans as the only running backs on the roster, right? Like, no chance. So there was always, whether it was going to be someone in the draft, someone in free agency, there was always going to be someone. And Zach Moss is the the perfect, most unoffensive guy you could add to a running back room, where it's like, if Chase Brown really does have the juice, Zach Moss is not going to be a limiting factor for him. And if he sucks, then he was never going to get there anyway. Right. No, I, I like Chase Brown and Zach Moss. Like, I want to be taking a lot of these guys right now. Um, Moss is up a ton. He's up 37 picks in ADP, but Brown, I don't think he's risen 
that much. There isn't three picks from pick 109 to pick 106. And Moss, I think, flips him eventually. You know, well, probably in the next week he'll flip him. Um, he's up to, to 127. So my guess is that they both settle into the late 90s. And I was comparing it, I uh, did a pod with with Daniel Raz and Kyle Dvorak and comparing it to uh, the Bills when they had Devin Singletary and Zach Moss, actually. Kind of funny how that works. So, that you know, Brown is the works. Singletary kind of makes sense, too. He's like, you know, he's going to could be like a reliable touch consolidator type of guy. Um, but I, I don't know. I don't know how this plays out. I think they both probably have usable weeks at a good price. I think if one were to disappoint, the other could really exceed expectations. Just seems like kind of, it's a great offense. Uh, yeah. There should be should be goal line uh, opportunities available. There should be receptions available. I mean, Burrow really throws to the running backs. This could get blown up. the The thing that would really suck is if they like draft Trey Benson or like a a pretty or Jonathan Brooks, right? And then that he he yeah, actually then starts. It's, to then be it's a, over. Right. It's like the end of the season now. All of a sudden, it's actually you want Brooks. So that's how this. That's how you lose with this. But if it ends up being the two of them, then I think you're you're really happy about being overweight on both. I don't know exactly why, like I'm not sure which one pays off, but I think you'll be happy. Yes. Yeah. I think, I think that's definitely, I think that's definitely true. Like you could tell me right now that you're just kind of smashing the button on both of them and yeah, that's I kind of get do. it. Drafting them, drafting yeah. them together. Any, any big thoughts on Mixon to the Texans? Um, yeah, I kind of, I don't know. I kind of like it. Yeah. I and I, like and I, it. And I thought I, I moved him up initially, like, like a lot in the ranks, like um, from where we, we had him because we weren't very bullish thinking he was going to get cut um, or had the potential to get cut. Um, but yeah, so I guess he's moved up. He's moved up to pick 80 now. Um, but I don't know. Mixon is, you know, he's not good, but he's never really been good. And never he's always really been good, been drafted very highly. So Mixon in like the 70s. I like it. I, I think it's I think it's cool. The wide receivers are gone. I need running backs. You know, maybe maybe he moves up and in more into the sixties and then it's it's a little bit of a tougher conversation. But I would I'd be open to taking him and you know, um probably the end of the like the five six turn. Like you could talk me into that. You could definitely you could definitely talk me into it. I don't know if I would do it. I one thing that's impacting how willing I would be to do it. It is the funniest little peccadillo about the big board right now, which is that when you get to about pick 70 and you look on your applet and you go to go select, there's just a wall of quarterbacks, tight ends, and running backs. And the only oasis in the middle there is Christian Watson, where, you know, it's a, it's Christian Watson sitting there at wide receiver 42, and then on either side of him, it's 15 running mm -hmm. backs and quarterbacks, and then you know, on, on both sides where it's like, okay, well, I'm not really that into Christian Watson. So I, I guess I literally have to take a running back here. You know, I like, for example, Tony Pollard or Joe Mixon. Uh, that's Joe Mixon for me. Yeah. I think it's Pollard for me. Uh, I, and that maybe that it, I might be coping. I, that might just be, that might be literally. How, how is it Pollard? Mixon was better last year and he's on a much better offense. Dude, did you know that Tony Pollard was PFF's number one graded running back from I don't week 11 care. on? Yeah. This is this is when you might not have a winning argument. When you're using a stat no one ever uses for any No one reason. ever uses. Yeah, no, because, because we talk about PFF rushing grade all the time. It's We cite it, we use it, we predict with it. No, we don't. We never use I, it. The, the actual Sorry, PFF, but we don't. The actual argument for it, and this is the only one that exists, is that he was actually very injured last year because of the tightrope sure. procedure yeah. and he couldn't play at his best. And actually the Titans will be getting, you know, that first four years of Tony Pollard that we all saw and made him a one, two turn pick in 2023, you know, for a team that wants to run the shit out of the ball. Yes. Yes. Sixth year running back returns from Dude, unfortunate six year, fifth year, six year running back breakout. Don't you to know re to recapture year three form? Just a very common thing that happens hey, all the time. Zach Moss broke out last year. It was his first season ever with more than 190 touches. That's true. And I actually, we have Pollard like dead, even with ADP, but that's uh pick 79 Mixon, 
as I said, I mean, if if he gets priced in the early sixth, fine. I I, I think that's fine. I, I don't really if Pollard were in the early sixth, I would never take him. You know, you know who is gonna get up, up pretty good, who I, I literally might not click once, Devin Singletary for the New York Giants. Devin Singletary with that quarterback and that offensive line, uh, unclickable for me, I think. I mean he's He's going to get a lot of touches for free. (laughs) Guaranteed touches, dude. It never fails. Listen, if it's, if it's like pick 17, I don't want guaranteed touches. If it's pick 117, 117. give me those guaranteed touches, man. That's, that's awesome. I I mean, honestly, you're you're probably right. Yeah. They, I mean, we have, we know like, it's not just like this coach has given, Running backs like a ton of work. He's given this running. He's back, given this man this. He the last time Brian Dable coached Devin Singletary, he played a hundred percent of the snaps for him in a playoff game. Literally one hundred percent of the snaps in a playoff yeah. game. Yeah, like and that's what Devin Singletary does. Like he's the ultimate. Just like throw him out there, and he'll he won't screw up, and he also won't do like anything cool at all. But like, who cares? It's running back. Like, like I just don't want negative plays, and that's what yeah. Devin Singletary does. And he's he's good at that. And he he earns coaches trust, and he plays all the time. Like, I, I'm I'm in. I'm in. I, I like him better than like Chuba Hubbard. Oh sure, yeah, Chuba Hubbard, unclickable, un unclickable. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I think he is clickable too. Come on, dude. That's like the most replacement level guy in the You're worst right. offense. Who's like so likely to get. Like you want to talk about a team that thinks Trey Benson can solve what ills them? David Tepper. Yeah, that's the that's true. I mean, they yeah. they are a pretty good candidate to draft somebody. Um, I mean, they sure. thought but, Miles Sanders was the guy, and they just got bullied out of it by how shitty Miles Sanders played. But I th- I think he's somewhat protected by Sanders because they just gave Sanders this contract. So there's your running back too. You know, right. they're not gonna they're not gonna cut Sanders. So I mean, they will they will eventually, but they're not gonna do it this year. So. Now it's, you know, how much how much draft capital are we, are we really spending on a running back? And this is a weak running back class. So now it's like, oh, they drafted, you know, Marshawn Lloyd in the fourth round. Like, that could, that you know, he could definitely uh, challenge Hubbard down the stretch. But I, I would just be worried that he's better than him. Yeah. Yeah, I would be worried about it. But also, the most likely outcome for a lot of these backs is that they are like Hubbard that they turn into right. basically a career like Hubbard's where they don't do anything really as a rookie. And then yeah. they, get a, they get a shot and they look okay. And then they get, you know, and it's so funny too. Cause I thought Hubbard through. was like such a good prospect at Oklahoma state. And now I'm like, he's the boring veteran who stinks. Right. But I kind of Hubbard is like the, the version of these bad. There's like three Hubbard's in this class who will, you know, hold our noses and drafts in 2026. But I don't know the, there, I don't know how much, year one production we we really get out of this class i'm drafting some of these guys because they're pretty cheap but yeah yeah dylan lob ray davis there's your there's your skeleton key the patriots they got Brissett in the door unironically probably better than anyone that played a quarterback for them last season they're gonna have one of drake may or Jaden daniels kendrick Bourne and demario douglas are are stone free for a team that's going to have better quarterback play than they did last year. Uh, uh, Douglas is like one seventies, but Bourne is like actually free. He's By the way, how free, funny, yeah. how funny Devonte Parker, June 23rd last year, signs a three-year contract extension. And he's already cut. It's Tough crazy. scenes. Yeah. yeah. Sam Sherman is doing uh, speaking of <laughs> speaking of our, our fallen co-host, man, he he is missing out on the Devonte Parker discussion. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We really shouldn't talk about it until we, we pod with Sam again. Born Born is one of those guys where, like, I mean, obviously, I think everyone feels this when they get to the end, 18, 19, 20 of these big boards where they're like, what are the odds that the guy I'm about to pick is even on an NFL roster in week one? You know, of just being like, right. I'm, I'm drafting a guy who's, like, not going to get drafted, going to get cut. I mean, Kendrick Bourne is going to be on a roster and is going to give you multiple – there, Kendrick Bourne is going to be $3,800 on DraftKings one week and be 27% owned at that salary. I definitely could see that, but he's 28 years old awesome and he's player. coming off a, a torn ACL. So this is, I mean, just because 
I was really into Brees Hall last year doesn't mean I don't care about all ACL tears. Like if it's an older player who wasn't ever that good, you know, like that's a concern to me. So I, I'm, I actually haven't really been drafting Bourne at all. I guess okay. what he got a contract. He got a contract. What was his contract? He got five uh, five point five million guaranteed. It looks like. Yeah. So not nothing. Not nothing. It's a. I. Don't, I mean. Is he the wide receiver? Two. What is it? What one, is, I mean, maybe one, one. I guess if they if they. What if they draft May? But I mean, I mean they much, might draft much... Harrison. Oh come on! They're not drafting Harrison. I, I might. They can't. They can't. You you run you run your season with Marvin Harrison Jr. and Brissett, and you just call it good. Yeah, and then you draft I think the quarterback you, I, next I, year. I think I think you got to keep Mac Jones if you're taking Harrison and try and rehab him with the new coaches. Well, they already traded Jones. I that's what I'm saying. I'm saying I'm saying that's the canary in the coal mine. I mean, Brissett, a quarterback. Brissett's kind of good. Like he's not good. No, but he's... he's a he's he is not. Now you're you're we're, we're doing fan fiction here. Here's here's what I'm going to say about Brissett. Brissett is not going to limit the development of Marvin Harrison Jr. So if you want, and this is I'm not that into Jaden Daniels. I think Marvin Harrison is a much better football player than Jaden Daniels. I feel a lot better about his his you know year three sure, outlook sure, sure. than Jaden Daniels, right? So let's say it goes Caleb, Drake, May. And I think trading back is probably the right answer at that point. But, let, you know, you can't trade back. You take Harrison, you're going to be bad. You're going to be really bad. You know, Brissett's not winning you many games, but he's he's not a disaster as a quarterback. So you're going to be able to get Harrison kind of on the right track. And I, I guess the problem is that next year's quarterback class isn't supposed to be very good. So now you're back in the same situation, but at least you have Marvin Harrison. And I mean, Marvin Harrison is the thing that doesn't come around. Like what's going to come around less frequently, Marvin Harrison or, or Jaden Daniels? Uh, Marvin Harrison comes around less often. So take, take Marvin Harrison then. But it just doesn't matter. Like the Marvin Harrison part of the equation doesn't win you anything. Whereas like the, the Jaden Daniels guy wins you the division sometimes. I don't think he does. I, I really don't think he does. I mean, you're 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 overall right that the the issue with Jane Daniels is that you find yourselves in the Justin Fields vortex where he like is good and exciting and like makes these sick plays, but ultimately doesn't end up playing a brand of winning football. And so half your fans want to kill you for even thinking about moving on from him. And then the other half of the fan base is like, I can't believe we have not gotten rid of this guy for a sixth round pick yet. And you just ultimately go in circles. It does. I mean. Harrison is a building block. Like, I, I think that's pretty clear. And, you know, if you're, if you're trying to win the division, that's got, you know, the Josh Allen and the jets this year are going to be pretty good. And, you know, the dolphins aren't going to be bad. So, I mean, I don't know. You gotta be, you gotta be thinking long-term if you're the Patriots, like this roster is a mess. They got nothing like I mean, they they need to trade back. Is the that they need to trade back? But I think sitting just sitting tight and taking Jaden Dan. You could talk me to Drake May because I really like Drake May, but I don't know. It's man, they're they're in a tough spot. I really hope they trade back and just get out of the way. Trade back and like take a tackle. No, I don't want this. To, don't don't ruin anybody, please. There's definitely. Um... There's definitely something to be said for quarterbacks who are just abjectly terrible so that the franchise just wants to move on from them. Like Sam Darnold and Josh Rosen, nothing exciting. No one was trying to sell themselves on that experience after living it for like two months. The the, the, the Dolphins gave it a shot. That was after year one, right? After one year, they got rid of him. Yes. That rarely happens. Well, because they got the number one overall pick and it was just right. so obvious that they could take Kyler. But yeah, I I mean they're definitely like the like the the fun bad quarterback is is actually just such a nightmare for front offices because it it splits opinion because Will being Levis. yeah well well come on let's settle down love we'll this what do you mean maybe it'll maybe it'll be okay maybe it'll be okay we just said <laughs> what are you doing you just got tricked <laughs> see I but I'm so I'm the guy who's getting duped I'm the guy who's getting duped <laughs> by Will Levis. He's the quintessential fun bad quarterback. I got, I got, I got du- fun bad quarterback. 
I got duped by Fields too. <laughs> it took me. It took me. It took me until year three of Justin Fields <laughs> to get unduped. It took me. Honestly, what it did is it took Tyson Bagent getting sacked once in his two starts for the Bears to be like, okay, you know what? <laughs> it's not happening for Justin Fields. <laughs> Don't dupe me, bro. Just took on a whole new meaning. Yeah. Oh, come on. I mean, Levis, Levis is throwing to, to Chig and Calvin Ridley and DeAndre Hopkins, and he's got Tony Pollard You're there now. <laughs> You're telling me you don't think there's – I mean, Levis – okay, Levis is fun bad, but it's fun – he's like – and he'll have – um he's definitely going to have, like, one great moment on a primetime game, too, where he, like – does something insane, you know, cross body throws 70 yards down the field to Nick yeah. Westbrook Akine or whatever. For like sure. that's happening. I think we have to get out of here a second. So Josh Jacobs. We do. We should touch on the fact that Josh Jacobs signed with the Packers and they cut Aaron Jones. So How nuts is bizarre. That? Yeah, it was it was the most clearly the most bizarre thing. Um the one thing Jacobs offers is ability to have a workload. I I if you he's, go back he's fancy listen, Devin Singletary, you know, he consolidates. Fancy Devin Singletary. Yeah. Yeah. I don't agree with the big jump in ADP um, positionally. Obviously, he was a little bit undervalued in in the overall market. But it's just him. I mean, A.J. Dillon is a free agent, right? It's just him, yeah. It's Emmanuel Wilson, I think, right now. But maybe they draft Patrick Taylor, yeah. Yeah. It's not. There's there's no competition. And the commitment. I mean, the commitment of signing this guy, cutting Jones, like... I mean that they have indicated what they plan to do. Yes. Um, and the and it's a good offense. The thing I would say that is gonna be a limiting factor would be Packers and Matt Flora play super slow. It's not just a Rogers thing. Mm-hmm. Um they they mm-hmm. I mean they played super, super slow with Rogers, still pretty slow. And Matt LaFleur puts everyone in a timeshare. He put Derrick Henry in a timeshare with Dion Lewis. Go back and look it up. It happened. Um Aaron Jones was forced to split touches with Jamal Williams and AJ Dillon. That's a good point. Regardless of how effective the secondary guy was being, you could argue it's because Aaron Jones never, like he, maybe the coaching staff just never viewed him as a workhorse guy. I, I'm not that convinced by that argument. I mean, he is more of like an explosive, you know, kind of pass catching threat. I mean, he Jones is good. I think Jones, the crazy thing is, like, if you if we were drafting running backs for this year only, I would take Jones over Jacobs. Yes, completely agree. So it's just kind of crazy that they like ate money with Jones and give Jacobs this big deal. Like, why not just ride out the Jones contract and then figure out running back, the most replaceable position next year? It's very strange. I think. It is a health related thing. I think they just probably got sick of Aaron Jones always having that hamstring thing. It's, it's been a problem for two years for him. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. It seems like a real coach's thing to be like, I never know what running back to game plan for. It's motherfuckers. Hamstrings always hurt. Bring me Josh Jacobs. He's never hurt. That literally <laughs> is what it seems like to me. Yeah, no, I could definitely see that. Um, Barkley, where are you at on Barkley? Because he's, he like, he's moved up. Justin Herzig just, out. yeah. Yeah, I'm priced. I'm completely priced out. Herzig was tweeting like how his ADP's moved up and it made no sense. So I'm like, I just made me feel like really good <laughs> because I was like, someone said like, I, I don't know what's happening. Like, why is this? Isn't that a, isn't it a bad landing spot? It's, it's, it's not. Well, you know, it, it depends on how far you want to zoom out on the chart, right? Micro bad landing spot. You know, like if you wanted to be the, uh, you wanted to be uncharitable, you'd be like, Hertz never throws the running backs. He's going to lose all this goal line work. And then if you Why want to zoom out on the chart even seems, further. That just well, seems like what's going to happen. Because he was a New York fucking giant. He played for like the loserest well, franchise with the loserest offensive line. Like, like he was, he literally yeah. played in fantasy football Siberia. We're like. Still he, not great. He's not going to have goal line touches or receptions, but I, maybe I, do, he does, I do agree. Man. Like uh, my, my ninth, my ninth eye open thing on this is the, we really do got to get out of here in a second. So I'll let you respond to this. Then we go. The ninth eye open is the Eagles believe that Kelsey was the real secret sauce to the tush push. It's not going anywhere. Obviously they still have to do it, but Hertz has hurt his knee two years in a row. The tush push definitely is a lot harder with that. So I think one of the things you could, if you charitably thought would be, you know, we're down here at the goal line anyways. Like, these are not huge possessions. We got to get these touchdowns. Running backs are effective at it. We have the cap space. Let's sign this fancy fucking running back 
to score our goal line touchdown so Hertz doesn't get piled on with this knee. So, yeah, if you're not watching the video version of this, Davis does, in fact, have a, a board up behind I'm, him. I'm with Charlie a bunch of... Day <laughs> connecting the dots right now. Pepe Sylvia was the key to the touch push, and now uh, they can't do it. We can't run anymore. I mean, I get, I guess that, but like that to me, that's like stuff you talk yourself into in the third round, not the second. Sure. That's not what second round picks are for. It also is just like a factor of running backs are true projected workhorse running backs, like stop at about running back six right now. You you get to, you get to about running back six and you're like, I don't know what any of these guys are going to look like. And you look at Barkley and you're like, yeah, that dude's getting 300 touches if he's healthy. Yeah. I just think I can find, I mean, especially with like you, we just talked about like, you know, mixing and I mean, I don't love Pollard, but I've taken Pollard, you know, he goes, he goes like fairly late. So I take like, and yeah, you're not getting like 300 touches, but you're getting touches. You can get touches like throughout the draft and you, what you can't get is good wide receivers. Good wide receivers are drying up so fast. So if I'm taking an early round running back, I want to be like, not this guy's going to get me touches, but this guy's going to potentially score like 40 points in a week. So like, yeah. I, I'm t- I'm like I like A Chan right A Chan is because sure. I I don't know maybe he has like three good games but two of them break fantasy that week you know well, so that's almost, that's, that's, kind all, of that's the... almost like what I expect to happen is like he's definitely gonna miss six games with injury but the games he mm-hmm. plays he's gonna be pretty awesome I like that especially if touches are, are as cheap as they've ever been to acquire give me what right. I can't get later what what can I not yeah, get let later? me let Dude me get let me let me draft a bunch of Joe Mixon Zach Moss teams where i'm getting my boring 13 points a week and let me get a chain 33 points twice a week twice a year this is why i'm open to singletary and hubbard because i'm like these touches are free let me get these touches and like they're worse touches i guess they're not that much worse and then i get you know a little i get explosion or i get wide receivers or i get an elite tight end which are super cheap right now or i get an elite quarterback you know correct all right i gotta go everyone thanks for listening we will be back next week